I want to welcome you guys back to another dusty day out here in the workshop. I have a really cool project planned for today. It's going to be a quick one, most likely a two-part series. We, I, I, I am going to be making a bush sword. So it's really just going to be a, a monster of a knife. Kind of like if a, a machete and a really big chopper had a baby. It's going to have that, that blade length of a machete, but a real nice thick blade like a chopper. I want to take you over to the anvil and I'm going to show you the design that I have drawn up for this massive knife. Something along these lines. In total, it's going to be 24 inches, maybe 25. We'll see how long the tip forges. It's a generous 5.5 inch handle, half inch here. So we have ourselves a good 18 inches of blade, maybe 19 inches, depending on how long the tip forges out. I'm going to do a nice fuller up top here and reduce that weight, keep it nice and light. And there is going to be a very slight distal taper. And the tang is actually lower here than here, which is why I have to forge this piece and not just do material removal because I had thought about just doing that. But there's a couple things I have to forge, and here is a piece of steel. What made me think of doing this was I simply grabbed a piece of 24 inch bar stock and it just made me go, you know, that'd be a knife. So, I have to make it be a knife. So if you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. So, I am going to start up the forge and throw this piece in the fire.
now it's cooled off, I am going to trace where I want to grind out the handle and the tip. Now, I wasn't trying to forge it super close to final dimensions, just I just wanted to forge in the tip so I'd get a little extra length out of it and I needed to forge down the back of the handle because the tip of the handle here is lower than the rest of the blade. So we have the rough profile all ground in. I'm gonna do one thing. I'm gonna go back into the forge. I'm gonna spread the end of the handle just a little bit and start tapering the tang just a tiny bit. A small modification but it just feels so much better in the hand that way I really like how that handles feeling so now once the doubles are ground this knife will be ready for normalizing thermal cycling and the quench and then tempering so I am gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna mark where the pins are gonna go on the handle and get those drilled before I do anything else because I I hate forgetting to drill my handle pins until after the heat treat because then it is just such a fight to get them through. So I'm going to drill them now so I don't have to worry about drilling through any hardened steel. So I have the profile all worked out here. The choil is all cut in. 
And now it is time to trace on where I want the fuller and where I want to grind the bevels to. I kind of marked where the handle scales will be so that I know just kind of how to lay everything out. So I'm going to do a little drawing on here and then it will be time to grind and heat treat. And there we go, that gives us both where the fuller is and where the grind lines are. So I, on this side as well, I do the fuller first so that, that way if I slip at all with the small wheel, I don't gouge the ridge here. That's something that I have struggled with in the past is if I do the bevels first and then try to do uh, grind in the fuller, I will gouge the ridge between where the fuller is and where the bevel is. So if I do the fullers first, it helps to prevent that and it helps to make it easier for me to grind this line at very, very straight. So I am going to get the small wheel attachment into my grinder and I'm going to start laying in these fullers. have been ground. They're not 100% perfect, but this is good enough for preheat treat. After the heat treat, after the heat treat it's actually easier to clean up the fullers and get all those lines really crisp because the steel is a little bit harder and uh, I move up the grits to 180 grit after the heat treat and so I can get these lines really really crisp. This is good enough for now. So I am going to grind in the primary bevel. So I have the primary bevels ground in. And let's say that that's all pretty straight and good for preheat treat. I left this little bit right here for bringing these bevels all the way up to 320 or 400 grit after the heat treat. So this should look absolutely amazing when it is all finished. And now it is time. Now it is time to heat up the heat treating oven. 
and throw this in. And I'm very happy I've got it down. Right now it's at about two pounds, six ounces. And uh, I think with all the finish grinding, and I'm gonna distal taper it a little bit. So I think I can bring this down to about 1.8 pounds. It's gonna be really perfect for something this large. All right, we are up to temperature. I'm going to stop it for just a moment so I do not get electrocuted. Because this knife kind of pushes the boundaries of the size of this oven. So, this is exactly what this hole right here is for. To be able. this long of a blade. And there we go, it is kind of a tight fit. As you can see right there. But everything will get hardened except for the very end of the tang. And this, now I'm gonna turn this back on. Let it come back up to temperature. I'm give it about a 10 minute soak. Then, be time to quench. This just looks absolutely fantastic. I am so very pleased with that. You can't tell from this angle, but it is extremely straight. It looks just wonderful. So now I'm going to go pop this in the oven for two cycles of tempering at 400 degrees, two hours each cycle. This big, beautiful blade is out of the temper. Looking wonderfully straight. I am very, very happy with that. The weight has been reduced significantly. It is now very easy for me to wield one-handed. I've had a ton of fun making this knife so far. It is literally a dream knife. I had a dream. I had a knife like this, so I decided I had to make one. And uh, I happened to pick up a piece of uh, steel that I was cutting up to make some Damascus that was two feet long or so, and it just it felt so, just so perfect. So I decided I had to make one, and uh, I'm very, very pleased that I did. It's looking awesome, that fuller is looking amazing. So in the next episode, I am going to get this all finished up, get a handle on it, and uh, it'll be a totally functional, beautiful, big beautiful chopper so i want to thank you for watching this episode if you are new to the channel please like and subscribe it really helps me to grow the channel especially if you get in there in that comment section leave me a comment let me know what you liked let me know what you didn't like really excited to continue building my youtube channel and i can only do it with your help so i want to thank you one more time you guys have a wonderful rest of your day i will catch you on the next episode of let's make a knife you guys take it easy I want to thank you for joining me out here in the shop once again for another episode of Let's Make a Knife. In today's episode, I am going to be finishing the bush sword. I'm very excited to see how the fullers look when they are hand sanded to a crisp 320 grit. So, I am going to go ahead and jump on the grinder. I'm going to get the bevels ground up to 220 grit, and then I'm going to hand sand um, the entire knife. I'm going to hand sand it all the way up to 320 grit. A really nice beautiful finish on it and then it will be time to uh, get the handle done 
and uh, we'll get this knife all finished up today. So I'm very excited. I'm glad you're here to uh, go through the journey with me. If you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe. It really helps me to uh, grow the channel and continue building all these awesome projects out here in the shop. So I want to thank you and uh, let's go ahead and get started. And so the blade has been ground all the way up to 220 grit. I will take it to 400 grit before I do the hand sanding. But first, I wanted to pick the handle material, and I, it's a really beautiful wood. It's really nice and dark. It's a great figure and grain. And that is going to be my handle material. I'm going to finish grinding. I got it down to 1.9 pounds. After the hand sanding, we should be uh, just about at 1.8. So I'm very excited that I got the weight down. It is very, very fast and nimble in the hand, so it's time to get this all finished. So now that I have it all cleaned up on the inside here, I'm going to take the handle scales off, and then I'm gonna clean up this area, and then I'll be ready to hand sand.
So now I'm gonna start the hand sanding. I'm gonna start by hand sanding the flat area right here. And then I will work my way into the fuller. I want the fuller hand sanded and then I will hand sand the bevel last. So the hand sanding is completed. Oh, look at that fuller. That clip turned out wonderfully. So now it's time to glue the handle and get this all finished up. All right, so the handle scales have been glued and it is now time to shape the handle and get this blade finished.
That is where I'm going to call this episode. Such a wonderful, wonderful build. Lots and lots of fun. The blade feels absolutely wonderful in the hand. For me, it's very controllable. Uh, with the handle scales on, it's just over two pounds. Uh, which for me, this size of a blade, it's essentially a short sword. Uh, very, very nice. Balance is a little far forward, so it's a very choppy blade. Uh, but you can still choke up on it and I could even do a little bit of fine work. So it's uh, definitely what I was looking for going into this build. So I want to thank you for continuing to watch me uh, build all of these very unique blades out here in the shop. I have so much fun making dust and making blades. If you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe. Every like, subscribe, and comment always helps me to build the channel. Find all my links down below. And I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. I will catch you on the next episode of Let's Make a Knife. <laughs> <laughs>